Welcome back to a new episode here in Suave. Today's episode, and actually today's the this is the video number 100 that I'm uploading. I haven't like actually kept notes of every video that I've made. There's a bunch that I have not uploaded because I didn't end up liking them, or I don't know, they were too boring, I guess. But yeah, so as you have seen in the intro of this video, I'm gonna show you a quick um cool effect that you can use and for that you can simply drag your photo or, or video into the timeline or you can create a new fusion composition to work on that one the reason for that is if your photo or video has a different resolution than your timeline it might look different in the end result so that's in that case you might want to go with a fusion composition right now you see that case here but i'm not using the fusion composition because this is just a tutorial project. So let's just go right away and start. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and so and to your selection tool, control M, you can pre press for that. And then you're gonna find the grid warp node and you're just gonna add it to your image. And then there's a bunch of different options that you can play around here. If you press source, it's not gonna actually affect the image for some reason, although it would have made sense if it did. But if you know what the source one does, let me know because I haven't been able to figure out how to make that one work with. Okay, anyways, then there's this different magnet type tools. Their selection one is that it's only going to move whichever you actually select. And you can select many at a time or select two like these that are away by holding control. And then there's a magnetic which sort of like as you drag along, it will move the things and make selections. Okay, so then there's the X and Y grid size, which adds the amount of lines that you want to use. And the more that you have, the more detailed portions of your image you're going to be able to select. And so how do we animate these? Right here, you just simply create a new keyframe for that. Or you can right click and press animate. It's going to create a keyframe. Then we're going to go to a couple frames ahead. And then we're going to select the points that we want to animate. And you can do this with any point in your footage. So we're gonna go here to the frame 20 and we're gonna play around with this portion of our subject of our image right here. And then you simply just wanna drag whatever you wanna animate. Like this, make it a big nose. And you could probably use this effect for like a scary movie or something like that. And then you can also use these adjustment lines to make the curve to adjust the curvature of the modification that you're doing. And we're gonna drag the forehead a little bit and then the eyes of these and yeah it looks a little bit weird and creepy and that's what it would sort of like go for like a horror movie effect or whatever it remind me reminded me of the it of the of Pennywise but yeah and then after you have your animation we're gonna create the keyframe here because for some reason it's showing the keyframes but if you're working on source it's gonna save those so it's sort of like two different palette two different sections I guess so we're gonna create a keyframe for here again for some reason it didn't save it and then we're gonna go back and reset everything so now we're gonna have our animation of our photo right here and then one last thing or the next thing that you can do to add to your animation is you can go to the spline tool and then select everything whoops and then you select everything with Control a and press f so it's a little bit smooth and then you can play around with this the animation if you want it to be a little bit faster or like more like sort of like slower yeah play with the graphs around one other thing is the last, the last thing that you can add is a a motion blur effect and i will usually lower the shutter angle to like 80 or 100 and then after you have your motion blur, then that is pretty much it. You can go back to your main screen and then see what the effects is. And that is pretty much how you would use the grid warp effect. You can also make things melt down like you're seeing right now on your screen. Or maybe, I'm not sure what else. I can't think of anything else. But if you do and you want to make a video about it, it will be really cool to see what you can come up with. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video quick sort of tutorial introduction to this great warp tool in DaVinci Resolve here and I hope to see you if you did enjoy this video don't forget to like and comment down below 
whatever what kind of video would you like to see if you have any other requests uh, I'm always trying to take notes of requests and try to get to them as soon as I can but I'm also busy with other stuff so I can't promise the speed of delivery of each request but yeah that is pretty much it for today's video and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave